It's just my immense pleasure to introduce to you, to you Pastor Dean Grotzinger. So Dean is the senior pastor of True North Church. He is a very good friend of mine, which is why we're hugging. So we've had the privilege of serving alongside together for many, many years. Um, and actually, Dean and I were also study buddies for a while. So we used to travel backwards and forwards to New York together. So it's just great fun. Dean has um, an amazing anointing upon him of joy and fun. So he's just a great guy to be around. I've always appreciated that about you. But he's also a man of the spirit. So it is with confidence that I can tell you that he has he leans into God and he brings the word of God to life through the power of the spirit. That's why I'm encouraging you to make sure you're open to this. Now, this is Dean's first time of being at True North preaching, but actually it's not the first time you've been quoted. No, I didn't tell you this before. <laughs> so if you've heard me speak before, you might have heard me talk about Dean actually, because he's the author of this great question, how much can your soul bench press? This is where it came from. So be ready for more profound words tonight. So Dean, thank you. Can I pray for you? Father, we thank you for friends who come and encourage us and who've been coming and encouraging us in this season at Riverview Church. Lord, it is with expectant hearts that we now get ready to receive encouragement from your word. God, we thank you for Dean's faithfulness of leaning in and listening to you. And we commit ourselves to being faithful, to put into practice what you now want to say to us by the power of your spirit. We pray this together as God's people. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm going to switch mics. Thank you. This one. This is the one I wanted. Yeah, I was thinking that. Can I say thank you so much, Tanya, for that uh, an amazing uh, just introduction. And I, it is my first time to get to speak uh, here at Review. And I just want you to know I, I count it as a great privilege. Uh, I know most of you, you won't know me. Uh, but like so many all across our city, pastors, leaders, just people of all walks of life, uh, I've been so blessed by this church over the years. I've had so many wonderful friends uh, who are, have been pastors here, on staff here, on the team here, and, uh, and so I'm just so glad and feel right at home and getting to be here uh, with Tanya as well, uh, an amazing friend of mine, is just a, a real blessing tonight. And so I know, uh, you know, you won't know me, uh, but I thought I'd introduce myself a little bit so we could get to know each other and have a good time together tonight. Also, big shout out to everybody watching online. Uh, great to be uh, speaking with you as well. Thanks for, for being a part of our, our service tonight. Uh, you know, people often ask me where my accent is from. Uh, I get asked that a lot. It's from Alchemos. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Alchemos. Uh, how many people know Alchemos, know where it is? Yeah, a few do, yep. How many people uh, here at Riverview Church know the freeway goes north beyond Karenup Road? Just curious. So we have. A few people know. Anyway, it does. It keeps going north, and uh, eventually it ends, and then you get off, and you keep going north, and eventually you'll get to my house. But uh, that's my, my wife, Lisa, and I live up there. I, I'm used to introducing our family a certain way. I, I would have, up until recently, I would have said, I'm married. I've got a wife, Lisa, and we have one son. His name is Levi. Uh, he just turned 11 years old. But as of about 18 days ago, I now introduce my family as this. Here, I've got a photo I brought. This is my wife, Lisa, my son, Levi, and my other son, Asher, who's very tiny. Hey, give him a clap. He's uh, 18 days old, and, um, and I brought some other, I've got another photo. Check out this photo of him. Uh, look at that guy. Come on, you just, it, what I thought, okay, I thought, you may or may not like what I have to say tonight, but I thought if I showed you baby photos, You'd like me, right? I mean, come on, look at that face, people. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to pull away from him today, but I told him I'm, I'm speaking at Riverview, and, and he wanted to just say hi to all of you, okay? So he's young, but he, he, uh, he said, hi, Riverview Church. <laughs> he said, hi. So not only do I love this show, he, say, he says hi. And so it is uh, with great joy that I do get to speak with you tonight. And so that's my family. That's a bit of where we're at. We're probably in that stage. We're in the, the newborn uh, stage. We're also in a bit of like kind of surprise stage because we thought he was coming in August. Um, so if you're like, why would you come speak somewhere like 18 days after? Well, I didn't plan this, okay? So, but what I believe is that I, I really do believe I've got a message for you tonight. And I really, uh, I hope that as Tanya said, you can open up your heart to maybe hear something God may want to speak to you tonight. 
And as I've thought about uh, you as church and, and praying this this week, I've got a real simple message for you tonight. And it's don't wait for joy. Uh, my message to you tonight is don't wait for joy. Turn to the person next to you and say, don't wait for joy, all right? If there's nobody next to you, just say it to yourself. We won't think you're crazy. All right, I'm gonna open up God's word. And uh, here, it, there's a few short verses in Thessalonians that I wanna speak to you tonight. All right, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 says this. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I love these verses because, as I said, I, I may not know you, you may not know me, but guess what? I know God's will for your life. You know, some of you may be here tonight, you're going, what's God's will for my life? Where does he want me to go? What's he want me to do? Some of you may be here tonight, and your question is, who's God's will for my life? You're wondering, you know, but here's the thing. I may not know you. I may not know your circumstances, but I know this. I know there's a way of life that God wants for you, that's his will for you, and that way of life and that quality of life he wants for you is one that is, uh, what it says here is all about rejoicing always, praying continually, and giving thanks in all circumstances. You know, these verses here, Paul kind of brings together these three ideas of rejoicing always, praying continually giving thanks at all times or in all circumstances. He pulls these ideas together and they kind of represent one big thought, one big idea, and that is that the life of a follower of Christ should have a certain vibe to it, a certain characteristic to it, that the life of a follower of Jesus is not meant to be one where, where, where it's almost like, yeah, when things are going well, you got a reason to be joyful. You see, there's, there's two times that we can rejoice. We can rejoice right here and right now, or some of us think that we could rejoice someday, sometime, somewhere. Now, the, the second one of those actually is a little bit of a falsehood. We think that joy might be found someday, someplace, somewhere. We think there might be this thing that might bring us some joy, and that's when I'd rejoice but God says, no, my will for you is that you are always rejoicing, that you are praying continually, that you're giving thanks, not someday, sometime when everything came in the way you wanted, but in all circumstances. So we're going to talk about joy for a moment. Uh, do you know joy, we're told in the scriptures, this is something that is given to every believer. You know, Paul, in the beginning of his letter to this church, he's writing them a letter. Now, these, these, the crew at, at uh, Thessalonica, they are new followers of Jesus. They are coming out of a, a pagan culture, different kinds of religions, all those things. And Paul's writing to them, and here at the end, he gives them a bunch of practical instructions. He tells them, this is what it's like now. And he says, you're gonna rejoice. Now, in the beginning of his letter, he actually says to them, do you know what I love about you? He basically says to the church, I love that you received the word, you heard the good news of Jesus, and you received it, he says, in spite of severe suffering. This was a church who they were experiencing at the time they came to faith in Christ, they were experiencing, he says, severe suffering. And yet, he says, not only did they receive it, but it was with the joy, he says, that was given by the Holy Spirit. You know that if you're a follower of Jesus, we know God's given us his spirit, and we know this, the spirit gives us joy. So there is joy. If you're a follower of Christ, there is joy in your life, in your heart, by his spirit. And that joy is not a contingent on your circumstance. It's not a contingency on what's happening or not happening. It is a fundamental fact and reality because of what Christ has done for us. That joy is a gift of his Holy Spirit. It's been given to you. Now, what it says here is you should be always rejoicing. You know what rejoicing is? It's when you begin to express that joy 
in your life. It's when it goes from being just a, a fact of your life to something that is actually affecting your outward disposition, your demeanor, your, your actions, just kind of what you're like. That's rejoicing. It's giving expression to joy. Now, I think the challenge is that we are, we are called to be always rejoicing. In other words, that joy that's in our hearts should be giving expression in our lives. When? Always. Always. Now, I think one of the great challenges that we have at times is to actually let the joy we've been given show up in meaningful, expressive ways in our lives. When I was a kid uh, growing up, I grew up in Akron, Ohio. Does anybody know Akron, Ohio? Has anybody seen Space Jam 2, A New Legacy? The movie opens in Akron, Ohio. If you look closely in the background, there's a little clip of me, 1990, just joking. That's not true. But uh, Akron, Ohio, little known fact, uh, I was born in Akron, Ohio, the same hospital as LeBron James. Who knows LeBron? Anybody? Does the NBA get shown down this part of the city? I don't know. I'm in the north, man. And, and Steph Curry. Does anybody know Steph Curry? Little known fact, me, LeBron, and Steph all born in the same hospital. Now, I'm not saying that's a coincidence. I'm just saying, uh, you know, if you look at that hospital and who it's produced, uh, we've done pretty well at good old <laughs> Akron General Hospital. Shout out. I think there's a plaque in there, birthplace of LeBron James, Steph Curry, Dean Gretzky. Anyway, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I could be wrong. I might have taken it down. It's been a while since it's been. Anyway, when I was a kid growing up there, I remember in, in church as a kid, uh, we used to sing this song. I don't know if you do here or not. You could maybe bring it back. And I, has anyone ever heard this song? I, I won't sing it for you tonight, but because uh, that wouldn't help our joy vibes at all. But it, the song went like this. I've got that joy, joy, joy. Anybody know it? Down in my heart. You know, where? Down in my heart. Where? Come on. Now that song, it was all about, so some people, you know, I got this joy down in my heart. And it's good as a kid to, I think it's a great song because we should be reminded that Christ has put joy down in our hearts in a place that can't be stolen or robbed or gotten rid of. But here's the challenge. For some of us as followers of Christ, that joy's so down deep, nobody can see it. <laughs> it's like it's not, it's not being expressed anywhere. It's like, I got that joy. It's down in my heart. Like where? It's down, deep, down, down, down. Oh, really, because it is so far down, I can't even tell if that's joy or not, you know? Rejoicing always means, you know what, if you got joy in your life, it should be an observable reality. Rejoicing is give some expression to it. Sometimes I think as followers of Christ, it's like, man, if you got that joy is down in your heart, make sure you don't forget to tell your face about it. <laughs> Don't forget to tell the rest of your body, like there's joy in your life. You see, we know that joy, it's down there and, and it's a reality because, and the reason that God says, this is my will for you, to rejoice always, to express that joy always, is because that joy is not, it is not meant to be founded on circumstance. It's not, it's not founded, here's life. You know what life looks like? Let's, it's just, it's up, it's down. We can all wish it just stay up, up, up. Breakthroughs all the time. Great things always happening. That's not life. That's not life. But what this tells us that life, God's will for us, is that through all those ups and downs, the rejoicing stays like this. The rejoicing is not a sometimes. It's not a someday, somewhere. It's always. Because that reality of what Christ has done, it's always. And we are called to express it. You know, we have a, a saying in our, our team at, at True North, one of our kind of values and a phrase, I heard this from a good friend of mine once, and I just thought it was good advice. And the advice is this, don't be a fun sponge. <laughs> don't be a, turn to the person next to you and say, don't be a fun sponge. Don't be a fun sponge. Somebody like, what is a fun sponge? You know what a sponge does? You take a dry sponge, you put it somewhere, it soaks up all the water. You know what a fun sponge is? It's that person who steps into a room and soaks up all the fun. And you're suddenly going, what happened to all the fun in here? Do you know, I, I think one of the, you know, I was in this cafe this past week, actually. I was working on this message. 
And I, I thought, I need, some, I need some space. I'm gonna try and get my brain to work. We're definitely gonna need coffee. So I'm in that, remember, I'm in 18 days of newborn phase right now. So I'm in this phase where I'm drinking coffee like, you know, it's just going out of style. You know, I, and, and all the coffee I drink doesn't really matter. I used to coffee would keep me up at night. I could drink as much coffee as I want. If a moment arises, I can sleep. No problems. <laughs> I was in this cafe, though. There weren't that many people there. It was a time of day I wouldn't normally drink coffee. Apparently no one else did either. There's this lady working behind the counter, and it was like I sat down, and you could feel the energy in the room. You ever been somewhere, like, I could just hear her. That in, in this particular, the worker just kind of started on this rant of complaints. It started with, I just heard the phrase, young people today. Something about young people today. Now, how many people know if you hear the phrase young people today, uh, unless it's the kids workers here at Riverview Kids, it's probably not going anywhere good. And, and the complaints just kind of started, and I couldn't even keep up with them. And I had to put on these headphones. I'm like, it was just like the whole atmosphere was constrained by this. I was looking around, it was just like, and the place was emptied pretty quickly. And, it, and my whole reason for even sharing that is, do you know that every one of us has, has an absolute impact on the atmosphere of the rooms we go into? We have an impact. You got an impact around your dinner table at home with your family. You know, you got an impact in the rooms and offices you share at work. You got an impact when you step on the train. What's, what's the quality of that impact? God's will is that it is, you're bringing rejoicing. There is joy in your life being given authentic expression. You know, the real trick, we know, we know, we know, and I get, I know, we know this is what God wants for us. But the challenge is, Sometimes how do we help get it? How do we get the joy from down here to up here? How do we get the joy expressed when life is not necessarily going the way we want? Well, Paul says, he puts this, he groups it. He says, you know, we are as followers of Jesus. We should be praying continually. You know, his word for prayer here, and I think this is part of uh, understanding how we actually start to learn to be people who can rejoice always. The word he uses for prayer here, there's lots of words in the, New Testament can be used for prayer. It's not a word particularly focused on like petitionary prayer, or intercessory, or asking for things. It's this word prosukamai. It's a, a word we get prostrate from or falling prostrate or worshipful. It's this idea of worshipful prayer. And the idea of praying continually here is that our lives should be lived with a sort of constant and continuous just sense of living them as worship before God. You know, one of the, I think, uh, you know, currents we have to reckon with in, in the days and times that we live in is that in some ways all around us we do have a, a culture of complaining. And, and, and it's, you, you just around it, and, and it can be so easy to slide into this way of the world that's just complaint, complaint, complaint. I think sometimes as followers of Jesus we get almost a little too comfortable thinking it's okay for us to just vent a little bit at God. Now, there is a time for processing your pain and your difficulties and challenges, and that is good, and that's part of the process. We don't kind of fake it and act like everything's good. But there's also a sense where we're still called to live as worshipers of God. There's a sense within us that, you know what? He's on the throne. We're not. And our lives shouldn't be lived constantly thinking we can tell him how he should be doing everything. There's a time and a place like David to pour out your heart, but there's a bedrock sense in which we should be worshipful. And living our lives continually before him. You know, when we live our lives continually before him, I think it also opens our eyes and vision to start to see how incredibly involved God is and all the ins and outs of our lives. Praying continually, a life of kind of worship before him, continually means I'm beginning to see God not just located in a time and a space, be it a, a Sunday morning or evening or a, a morning devotional time, but actually my whole life is lived before the throne of God. And I'm starting to see his fingerprints on all the little things. And when I do that, when we do that, allows us to step into this third idea, to give thanks 
in all circumstances. You see, I think this idea of giving thanks, in fact, this one's so big, I want you to turn to the person next to you again and just say, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. I, I don't know how many times you said it or I said it, but good work. I think we're close enough there. But my whole reason I want you to say that is because if there is something that we can take away tonight that will lead you to experiencing joy, not someday, not sometime, not somewhere when all the ticket, you know, numbers come in, no, no, no. If there's something that will allow you to experience joy now is becoming a person who gives thanks in all circumstances. Gives thanks in, but Dean, you don't know my circumstances. You don't know what is going on in my life right now. I don't. But I know God's word says, in all circumstances, give thanks. And, and I don't think he does that to be mean. I don't think he does it to kind of, hey, you better just figure out. He does it because he knows if we can become people who in any and every situation can give thanks, we actually unlock something in our life. You know, I was reading this uh, article in Psychology Today not long ago. It was about the power of thankfulness. This is an article, just, you know, psychology. It was like a summary of all kinds of studies on thankfulness. And this article was just talking about all the benefits of people who tend to be more thankful. People, the more thankful people are, the, the less likely a person is to experience anxiety, depression. The more thankful a person is, the, the more uh, better outcomes in relationships they tend to experience. The more thankful a person is, the, the less likely they become to uh, ever end up with, you know, addiction to substance abuse or things of that kind. The more thankful a person is, the higher the uh, kind of ability to perform on any goal, be it work-related or personal endeavor. Thankfulness, it is an observable reality that thankfulness unlocks things in your life. It's an observable reality. And this should never surprise us as followers of Christ because we know this is God's, of course it does. It's God's will for your life. He created us to be thankful. I think thankfulness, when we, here's what happens when you learn to give thanks in all circumstances, is it allows you to begin to see God at work, right where you are. If you always think joy or what you're hoping God will do is someday somewhere, I got this thing, I want this thing, I need this thing. If you always think that, God's not someday and somewhere, God's right here right now. He's right here right now. And when you are thankful, you begin to see the God who is right here right now. And so if there is one way to begin to unlock this life where, where when, when as followers of Christ, we enter a room, we change the atmosphere in a, a different way. You know, it's not by faking it or trying to become some kind of over-the-top happy person. It gets cultivated by becoming thankful in all circumstances. I'm gonna let you know a little secret as well. If you find yourself just going, man, you don't know me, you don't know my circumstances. You know, one of the things I wanna en encourage you with and encourage and honor, you know, one of your amazing leaders and pastors here, Tanya Watson. If you watch right now how she and Neil together are journeying some incredibly difficult circumstances, you're gonna get a master class on what it looks like to be a person of thanksgiving. A master class on what it looks like to be a person who can actually rejoice in all circumstances. We don't give thanks for all circumstances. No, we recognize when things are broken, hurtful, wrong. But we give thanks in all circumstances. When we do that, oh, we come to life. We come to life. You know, one of the things I really hope for you because this whole idea of, you know, don't wait for joy. I, I just think so many of us, we think joy, we think the time to be thankful. We think it's just someday and somewhere, and it's in the future. But the future never, ever shows up. We only get right here, right now. And my, my encouragement to you is don't wait to be thankful. Begin to cultivate a life of ever-increasing, abundant, overflowing thankfulness. Because as you do that, you start to unlock joy. I think it's kind of like God, he's put joy in our lives, but if you wanna get it to the surface, your pathway, your pathway, the petrol you gotta dump on that flame is thankfulness. 
It's starting to look. It's starting to see everywhere that you can and give thanks. You know, one of our, our habits as a, a family in, in my house is that on a, in the morning, on our way to school, uh, dropping off my son, Levi, we always have this uh, practice that we always got to share three things that we're thankful for. And one of the tricks to it is we say, but you can't do the same thing more than once. Now, I always like just tweak it a little bit to try and cheat on that rule because it's really hard. But the whole reason we do that and the whole reason that's a, a good idea is because what you do is you can actually train yourself to become a thankful person. You know, sometimes I, we just slide way too easily into the current of the world towards cult uh, of complaining, of comparing, of thinking someday, and our language and our whole way of looking at the world shifts there. This is God saying, no, 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 here's the way to do it. Give thanks in all circumstances. Look for it. See it, because that's where God's at work. You know, joy is not something to put off for tomorrow. Adversity Difficult circumstances in life, those things are not optional. They come to us all. I don't know why some lives seem to have more rain in them than others. I don't understand it all, but I know this. We're all going to experience adversity. We're all going to have circumstances that we will not give thanks for. But God says if in all things, if you can always rejoice, if you can always pray continue, if you can always give thanks, that's the way to life. That's the way to unlock his presence and his joy in your life. Here's my call to you today is if you want to not wait for joy, I think one of the reasons we end up waiting for joy is you may have something in your life that you think that's the thing. You're praying for it. Maybe you're interceding for it. You're asking for it. You're, you're looking for it. And you're thinking that when that thing happens, then that'll be the breakthrough you want or that you need. And my invitation to you is not to say, well, give up on it or let go of that, but my invitation is to say, do you know what? Maybe, just maybe for some of you tonight, God's gonna say, I want you to take your focus off that thing and I want you to start to already see where, don't worry about what's gonna happen down the track. I want you to see where I'm at work right now. You know, this last week I was out getting uh, some lunch for my family because I'm a provider. And so I went to this place called Subway, and um, got some Subway. <laughs> Let's be honest, I went to Subway a lot of times last week, and uh, tonight's message brought to you by, anyway, but I was at Subway, and, uh, and I had this experience that I've now had twice in just the last few months. And I was like, I got the sandwich, the food, look at me, I'm going, I got the food, you know, look, uh, look at me go, what a dad, what a dad, what a husband, two kids, I got little Asher a meatball sub and um, a couple cookies. And, and so, I, I, but I go to leave with my subs and I go to reverse. And this was the experience I had that I just had recently. I, I go to reverse and I'm feeling pretty good. All right, let's head for home. And boom, clank. Oh, I just hit a car. Car is driving by and I've just hit them. Everyone's okay, so don't worry. Everyone's fine. It's low speed. But it was one of those collisions, just enough to, you know, get rid of your no claim bonus. Like, that's the kind of, that's the kind of vibe it was. And I couldn't believe it. When I hit it, I was like, this did not just happen. You know why? Because the exact same thing had happened, I think, two months ago. Like, exact. Hit a car, exact same spot. I'm literally waiting to still get my car fixed from the two months ago one. And now I'm, like, going to have to go do this walk of shame to go, this part's new. Look, just... Yeah, that's right. See those? They were there. And now this, I just did that. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, that's right. But I went through this, and I could not believe it. I was like, how did this happen? Because you know what? I've been driving for 27 years. Started driving when I was four years old. So I've been driving <laughs> 27 years. That part's not a joke. I have never in my life rear-ended somebody until uh, two, three months ago in a parking lot. And now I've done literally exact same thing twice. Now here's what I realized. I was like, okay, what is wrong with, like is this just, or like what, something's going on because this has never happened before. What's the deal here? Now I'm an NBA fan, we already established that. I'm like, we gotta go to the tape. Let's get some film session. Let's figure out what's going on. 
And what I realized is, okay, something changed in the last few months that was different. Now, here's uh, another little bit about me. We're getting to know each other. Now, this part, it's kind of personal, but it does tell you a bit about kind of the wild and crazy guy that I am. But last, uh, since we moved to Australia in 04, I have always driven a Toyota Camry. <laughs> I know, it's wild, it's crazy, right? Like, you're talking edgy kind of guy. Toyota Camrys. Now, I know I had a white one and a beige one. Like, I mean, we're talking edgy, edgy, you know? We'll call it beige. I call it the gold car. My wife calls it the brown car. Um, anyway, I drive them because I'm like, hey, they're reliable, it's good. Something changed last few, uh, about six months ago. Somebody uh, wanted to actually give us another car, and they traded it for a Camry, and it was like an SUV-style car. So what I realized is, when I went to the tape, I sat in this car, and I'm like, what is happening? And so I was like, okay, here's what happened. I went, I looked, this is what I always do. This is my habit. This is how I do it. It's how I've always done it, so, you know, 17 years. And I looked, and I realized that when I turned back around, I thought I was seeing out my back window. But if I just look the same way I've always looked, I realized I stare straight into what I've never had before, which is this tall kind of bucket seat top. And I realized I thought I was seeing the whole picture, but I wasn't. I was seeing like mostly nothing but black seat. And that's why I realized like twice I've done this. I went back in the Camry and I looked back. I'm like, did my, I'm like, oh, I can see. Now here's why I tell you all that because here's this one thing I, I hope and I'm pretty confident there's a couple people need to hear this. You've developed a habit of looking at the world, and you don't even see what God's doing in your life. You're so focused at times, and I think it can happen to all of us. You get focused on something, someday, somewhere. We think that's the thing that's going to that's gonna bring it for us. And so I'll be rejoicing then, I'll be thankful then, uh, but that thing is actually blocking you from seeing the God who is right here, right now. I, I think that some of you gotta just start to realize, like, I gotta stop looking out there and looking for, you know, and, and I don't mean to say it's not good to pray for breakthroughs and believe for things. I'm not, I'm not saying that, that's good, but I am saying sometimes we get so focused on that, we totally miss what God's doing right here, right now. There's a giant black thing in the way. There's a whole world outside that window. And God's at work, and he's there. And thankfulness is the thing that unlocks it, allows us to see it. Thankfulness is the thing that keeps us from always thinking about what's out there and going, God, what is right here, right now? That's where God is in your life. Yeah, I'm gonna invite the team to come back up. We're gonna continue to worship and celebrate God in a moment. Here's my invitation to you is, maybe it's a time to begin to say, God, I want you to help me to see with fresh eyes where you are at work in my life right here, right now. Maybe tonight's a night, you could even sort of stick a stake in the ground and be like, you know what? I don't know everything. I don't know all God's will for my life or everything that's up ahead, but I know this, I'm gonna become an incredibly thankful person. I'm not gonna miss one little thing that God is doing in my life. I'm not gonna miss an opportunity to give thanks. I'm not gonna miss an opportunity to start to rejoice, not someday somewhere, but right here and right now. So I promise you, I promise you this, there's lots I don't know clearly don't know how to back up in a crowded parking lot. There's a lot I don't know, but I know this. I know God's, God's word to you, God's will for you is that you rejoice always, that you pray continually, and that you give thanks in all circumstances. That's God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, I wanna invite you to stand right where you are, and here's what we're gonna do tonight to try and just start to unlock some of this, because I think it's so big. I think it's so easy in life to think, yeah, when that thing happens, when this thing happens, yeah, then I'll start to, we're just gonna spend a few moments here before we sing. We're gonna sing this song about promises in a minute, and just be reminded that God is faithful, and you know what? We may not know everything, but if we know God's faithful, well, you know what? That's, that's where our joy comes from. 
And I'd love it if we could actually just take a couple of minutes and begin to try and almost unlock something by just every one of us right here beginning to just spend a few minutes giving thanks. Just right where you are. I'm gonna invite you to say, just start to say, God, thank you. Start to ask him, God, would you show me all the ways, even today, I may have missed where you were right at work in my life. God, put my eyes, open them up. Help me see where you are at work. And imagine all across this room or maybe right where you are watching online, imagine just filling the air, not with complaints and, and God, why not this and why not that, but just filling the air and the atmosphere with thanksgiving, filling it with praise. And we do that right here so that we might do that same thing in our homes, around our tables, in our offices, in our schools, and taking that rejoicing presence wherever we go.